Well, hello everyone uh, and welcome to the visualization in Tableau workshop uh, conducted this afternoon by Kevin Fomalant. I am Sue Boffman from the Association of Research Libraries and very pleased to welcome everyone this afternoon. It's great that you can join us today. Uh, if you have attended one of these workshops, uh, you know I have a little bit of a spiel, and by the end of our series, you'll probably be able to recite it with me, um, but just bear with me while I share a couple things um, that I would like everyone to know about. Um, the Research Library Impact Framework Initiative has been underway for over a year, and we have a variety of teams who've been very busy exploring a series of five questions and these questions relate to space, diversity, equity, and inclusion, special collections, and researcher productivity. One of our overarching goals for this initiative is to help us understand how to address the most pressing questions that libraries have with regards to value and impact. And this initiative is being funded by an IMLS grant, and we're very appreciative of that. As part of this initiative, our two consultants, um, both are with us today, Kevin Bamalant, who'll be leading this workshop, and Margaret Roller, have developed a series of workshops on qualitative and quantitative research methods. And our goal for this workshop series is to help library staff develop their skills and expertise in conducting research at your libraries. So today's workshop is a part of this series. Uh, today's workshop and the same presentation on Thursday uh, will be recorded and we will share the recordings and Kevin's slides and other documentation uh, with everyone. And you are very welcome to share this information with any of your colleagues if you would like to do so. Uh, so with that, Kevin, I'm going to turn the virtual podium over to you. So thank you, Kevin, for being with us. Thank you, Sue. Thanks for the introduction. So let me just share my screen. So welcome to Tableau for visualizing survey results. Thanks for taking some time to learn about this software that I enjoy working with and that uh, I hope that you will too if you find the chance that you, uh, if you find the chance to at your home institutions. And so before I, I dive in into some of the technical um, details about Tableau, um, sort of this presentation, I have fewer PowerPoint slides than usual since I'm, you know, sometimes people haven't been exposed to Tableau very much, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to see what Tableau dashboards look like um, so that, you know, if you go online, you'll be able to recognize them when you see them and see what you like about them or what you think you might be able to do better in your own work. Um, so I'll be doing a demo, both of a, a more detailed um, non-survey related Tableau dashboard and then one workflow related demo where we're taking survey results directly from the source and then putting that data into Tableau and making the visualization. So you'll get the best of, the, the best of, the best of both worlds for that. Um, so I got into Tableau uh, when I started a position doing survey research several years ago. Um, and by that point, Tableau was already a pretty mature software. It came out about 15 years ago now. And it was really developed in response to a, a need in the market to uh, allow, allow people and companies to create um, you know, visualizations that without having too much coding knowledge or really any at all, and to you know, be, grant them more flexibility than you would have in Excel. We all love, know and love Excel. You can do amazing things with Excel, um, but it's also, um, but it's fundamentally a spread, it's, it's a spreadsheet, whereas Tableau is a visualization platform where you're building on data that can be stored in spreadsheets. And so from that, um, you know, I work with, uh, I work for a, an organization that does large survey projects. So I'm used to creating dashboards based on, on large amounts of data and then pushing those to a server where um, users will log on and actually see the, see, see the dashboards online. Now, you may have that set up at your home institutions, but it's just as widely common for individuals to use Tableau desktop, um, which is what I'll be working in today, um, where you're creating the visualizations, you're creating the dashboards on your home computer, connecting to the data source, and then you're either using it for yourself or you're sharing it with a small group of colleagues. Um, so there's lots of ways that you can use Tableau. And that's one of the advantages is that you're actually, um, you, you're working with software that's developed 
for individuals to shore in a small group, but also that's been scaled up to the larger corporate level. And so feel free to interrupt me with questions. Um, it would be great if you could do voice questions. I will monitor the chat at the same time though. Um, so please feel free. And so why Tableau? Uh, no coding needed is probably the biggest example of, <laughs> of why people like Tableau. So you can, you can go from Excel, create a dashboard without any need to um, use R or Python necessarily to format your data. And I'll show you how you can do that today. Um, there are fields in, in Tableau that you can create out of the data that you've imported. You don't necessarily need to have all of the fields correctly um, formatted once in the spreadsheet before importing. And a lot of the language in Excel will seem familiar in Tableau. Uh, I like that Tableau, you know, you can connect to a spreadsheet and connect to relational databases um, for survey platforms. It's probably just a, a, it's probably just an Excel or CSV export, but there are definitely lots of um, times when I'm working directly with a, with a SQL backend. Uh, one underrated um, aspect of Tableau is that you can combine your visualizations into one dashboard. Um, so when I'm writing, when I'm generating a written report in a, in a Word document, you know, this, the visualizations are separated out. You have to scroll through it. And sometimes it's hard to hold in your mind what you've just seen. So the advantage of Tableau, instead of uh, interspersing um, those visualizations with text, is that you're combining them all into one dashboard so that you can see the information and compare it against itself. And so in many ways, Tableau is actually a, a report replacement. Um, depending on the, the forum that you're working in. And one thing that's not well known, I think, about Tableau is that you can share it with your, with your coworkers, with your colleagues who don't have a subscription. Of course, it is a subscription service. You do need one to work in Tableau desktop, but there is a way to share what you develop freely with other, other people. And I'll show you that at the end as well. So today I'm going to go through what Tableau can do in Tableau desktop. Uh, I'll do a demo. I'll talk about data structures, which for me isn't a very important thing in Tableau. Uh, a lot of times when um, people are, you know, are frustrated with Tableau or they're frustrated with any visualization program, it tends to do with data structures um, since generally the rate limiting step is putting the data into the right format so that the visualization, visualization can be done. And creating the visualization is really the fun part where you're moving um, graphics around and you finally get to see the insights in, into your data that you've wanted to see from the beginning. So formatting correctly, putting in the right uh, structure is the rate limiting step. I'll show you how to import data into Tableau, which is very simple. Um, I'll do a demo with survey data. So you can see a simple workflow to put together a dashboard to present your survey results. Um, that dashboard will include multiple visualizations, um, which I think is important, and then a way to share Tableau dashboards with your coworkers. What can Tableau do? So the, when you're working with Tableau, there's a few ways that you can go about it. And one of them um, is to actually hold the data in Tableau, but it's actually not the case that Tableau actually has to store the data itself. It can draw on the data from the spreadsheet out, from outside or from a relational database without actually uh, holding the data in it. It's important for a number of reasons. Um, if you want to, if for data security reasons, you want to keep the data out of uh, Tableau, you can do that. On the other hand, if you want to share the data and you have no concerns about that with, with colleagues, you can keep it in Tableau. Um, and then if there's a live connection, that is if you allow Tableau to always be connected to your data source, um, it will update as you change the spreadsheet. Although with some, uh, a few steps along the way that depend actually on the platform itself more than Tableau. Um, so Tableau can process and transform data. Um, the workflow I'll show you uh, and a lot that are similar to a lot of data analysis workflows is that you'll be doing transformations in both uh, the spreadsheet and in Tableau itself um, in a reproducible way so you can save time uh, and not get frustrated on your path to creating these visualizations. Um, you can create new calculated fields, fields in an intuitive way, visualizations. 
you can create multiple dashboards. There are three components to the to Tableau's um, visualization process, creating a sheet, which is the initial creation of the visualization, putting those sheets together into a dashboard. And then finally, you can create a storyboard um, from those uh, those visualizations and dashboards if you choose. Um, I find that that's beyond the scope of what I usually need since it's more of a, um, it's what you would use in a presentation compared to what would you would you would use in a dashboard. And then one thing that I like that's important is that you can filter information by group and permission level. Um, so if any of you are interested, I can show you a way to filter dashboards um, so you can limit the people who see the individual visualizations. That's a little bit beyond the scope of the demo that I'll show you, um, but I can help you with that if that's something that your institution is interested in. And also, um, my favorite part of Tableau is the filter so that you can view, you can really drill down into the data that you're presenting by selecting a subgroup from a, from a filter. So whether that be a demographic group, um, an, a, an age group, or just um, down to the down to any granular level that you want to see de detailed information about. Uh, a few of the standout features that I like, I mentioned filters already. Um, when you are in Tableau, um, and this is something I actually think is not matched well in other software that I like and use all the time like R is that geocoding is automatically done excellently in Tableau. Maps are generally hard to create on your own. Um, you know, I've, I've tried it myself. I've tried stealing some Google Maps and and uh, overlaying information on top of that. Um, you know, I've used some some map specific commercial software that uh, requires a lot of programming ability. And what Tableau does, it actually has, it's really done everything for you. All you have to do is type in the right state names, uh, the right zip codes, and it geocodes it for you and you don't have to create the map itself. Um, one of the major advantages that I like. Um, there are many ways that you can represent information in Tableau and that's through through marks, which I'll show you in the dashboard itself. So in the, the map that you see on the screen right now, um, it's, I think it's a population map. So the larger the, the circle, the, um, the larger the population of that country. And then at the same time, the color I think is birth rate. Um, so there's already two dimensions that are easily represented um, in that visualization. Or as an Excel, this would be a challenging visualization to create, not just with the maps, but with the multiple dimensionality. And some of the drawbacks that I, I do want to talk about, no software is, is perfect. Um, so when you're using it, you need to be aware of uh, some, some things that will trip you up. Or when you're um, thinking about sharing data with colleagues, what are some potential you know, issues that you want to confront before you go ahead and do so? Um, so I did mention that you can connect directly to your data source, your spreadsheet. Um, there is a way to refresh it, but it does, it it can be delayed. Uh, so many times you'll actually need to close out of Tableau and come back into it to refresh the data. And again, that's more of the sort of the um, lack of communication between um, proprietary software. But in the end, um, it is something that updates automatically in the sense that you don't have to redo the visualization kind of like in Excel. Um, you do need to do transformation, particularly for survey data. I think even more than other data types, you do need to do some more data processing um, because of the, the data hierarchy that is innate to, to survey data. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, when you change data sources, um, you know, when I'm creating templates uh, for larger clients, I, I want to make it as general as possible. Um, so that I can reuse that that template for for a future client, um, and in that case, I could just change the data source and connect that to the the template itself. Um, and ideally, that should work without any hitch. But I will say that um, you know changing the data source does tend to cause some bugs because of the data structures in your spreadsheet. Any small difference, sometimes even unseen differences that you can't tell from the spreadsheet itself uh, will cause um, an issue with the visualization on Tableau side. So that's something to be aware of if you're planning yearly, uh, yearly work is that you can create a template, but also take some, uh, spare some time um, to you know, prepare for the next uh, year the next year's report, the next year's dashboard, so that when you hit those issues, uh, you're prepared for them. 
And then one thing that um, I don't think too much about, but I guess it can be an issue if you're sending your, your workbooks to other people, um, is that Tableau workbooks are very large. It is large software. Um, any visualization software is going to take up a lot of space. So when you're downloading Tableau Desktop or Tableau Reader, <clears throat> excuse me, onto your desktop, be aware that it will take up a decent amount of space um, and then it's difficult to use with other large programs um, at the same time. So it's best to focus on Tableau itself, do your work, and then move on to the next step in the process. So Tableau Desktop is the subscription software that I'll be working with right now. Um, it includes all the fundamental features that you use in Tableau. And then I alluded to this earlier, there are two types of workbook files that you can use in Tableau. The, the TWIB and the, the TWIBIX files, uh, they're called. And so the, the TWIB file doesn't include the data with the, with the workbook itself, but the TWIBIX file does. And this is important that if so that if you want to share data with your colleagues, you save it as a TWIBIX file, the data will be embedded into that workbook. Um, so you send it and they'll see that data itself. Now, if you, if you, save, the vis if you save the workbook as a, as a TWIB file, um, it won't have the data with it. So you're just sharing really an empty visualization if you send it to a colleague. Um, and so you can share dashboards through Tableau Reader or the newer version is actually Tableau Viewer. Um, and I'll show you how to download that so that you can send uh, the, the visualization that you created in Tableau Desktop um, to your colleague, ask them to download Tableau Reader, and they can they can view it without being able to edit it, but they can see it. And then, um, you know, once I share the uh, the dashboard that I created for this this workshop, um, you can use Tableau Reader to download that um, that workbook and play with it yourself. And so, I commonly actually use in my work uh, Tableau Server and Tableau Online, um, which allow you to post your workbooks to a web portal and then do some more work with permission structure. And this is the, this is for wide, uh, wide use. So you can allow, um, you know, dozens or hundreds of users to log in at the same time and view your dashboards, which is something that um, Tableau desk, desktop doesn't have. Um, only one person can use the, the workbook at the same time. And so let's, I'm going to switch over to the, this is a, a demo workbook. I want you to see what Tableau looks like. Um, that's not what it can do really. That's what it looks like in general. So this is what happens when you, when you open a workbook, you start, you add in a connection. So this is the world indicators connection file. You add your connection here so you can connect it to a Microsoft Excel file, which I imagine is what most of you will be doing. Um, we'll be doing and then also some relational database connections at the same time. And so this is the, the data that you've imported by column. As you can see, it handles a lot of different types of data well. Um, actually, let's see here, it's in my other workbook. I think it's, this is an older version. There's a nice data interpreter that, that I, I noticed the last time I used Excel or sorry, the last time I used Tableau, actually did a nice job of fixing Excel data without me doing a lot of processing. So I'll show that and show you that in the next one. And then this is the live connection. So this is the one, uh, the connection that connects directly to your data so that when you make a change in Excel in your back end, you can hit the refresh and then this will update what you see here in Tableau. And so this will show you, click here, and it will show you the data type, um, common ones, numbered date, string, and then also geographic role, which actually is quite sophisticated. You can go down to the congressional district level. But for, for many of you, I imagine it's state or zip code or even country that you might be most interested in. Um, and then if you, so you actually have to dump the table into the into this visualization here, so this is the data table itself from the from the world indicator source. Um, but a lot of times when I'm working in Tableau, I'm actually joining a few pieces of data together. And if there's a so if you say you have two different sources of data, um, this is a lot of economic information about different countries. Say you have other information about the country itself. Um, other demographic characteristics in a different spreadsheet. What you can do 
is create another source to another Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then as long as there's two columns that have country informations, have country information, you can join that data on that column and they don't even need to be uh, named the same way, something some of my other software doesn't do. So good for Tableau for getting that right. Um, and that is, uh, that's useful. You know, if you, since you don't necessarily want to have to do the combination yourself in, in Excel, uh, you don't have to copy and paste into another spreadsheet. You can just dump both, both spreadsheets into, into Tableau and join them. Um, so that's the, the data spreadsheet that you'll see when you open up Tableau. Um, so the color at the top, it's a little bit subtle. I think you can see it though. Blue matches the connection. But you'll see that there's also some fields here that don't have any color on them at all. And that's because they're calculated fields. So what you can do if you want, it's uh, a good one here. So if you want to cal calculate something at, uh, about birth rate, maybe you want to say that um, you know, there's a correction for birth rate. Um, that your numbers were off by 1%, then you can add that into the calculation and then name it something, birth rate correction. And now you have a, a calculated field. So you can use, you can use both fields in the visualization uh, itself. So I'll toggle to the, the sheet. So what you're looking at now, is a Tableau sheet, which has, um, which is really where you're going to be doing most of your work in creating the visualization itself. So on the left is the data tab, which will show you all of the pieces of information that were in your data source tab. Um, so green, the green color means um, that it's a, a continuous, and then blue means it's categorical. Is all that that means, and then. Importantly, the marks, this is where you'll be doing a lot of your work, the marks portion of Tableau is the type, uh, sort of the way that you'll be visualizing the data itself. Um, so there's color, size, label, detail, and tooltip. And then you can choose whether to make it a bar graph or here. What, we've, what it's done is to make it a map or the, many of the other uh, types of visualizations, which you can see. I'll show you a few more later. So like I, I think I showed you in the PowerPoint, there's actually two dimensions that appear on this visualization. One is the, the birth rate by color and then population um, by size. And so that corresponds to these two measures they're called. In Tableau, um, if something is numeric and you use it to calculate a statistic, it's a measure, whereas a dimension is more of what you would think of as something on the, the X axis. So it's a little bit, it's a bit more complicated than that, but I think as measures as the Y axis values and dimensions as the X axis values. And that's important because you can actually switch them. Um, like if you want to treat, if you want to treat um, population 65 plus as a measure, you can do that here in Tableau and that'll change and that will change the type, the data type uh, that's native to Tableau. So the marks, um, you know, it's, I, I think you can tell what, what color size and label are. The detail is useful. Um, it only shows up if you hover over the item, um, but it is nice, I think, to not have to hard code text into the, the map itself and just use the, the detail um, to reveal the information that you want the user to see if they're more interested. One of the nice features. And this, uh, actually this filter got away from me. Um, but you can add a filter. Let's, will be a good filter. You can customize the filter. And so I can show you a little bit more about how this works um, 
in the, the survey spreadsheet. But one nice thing is that you can have the filter apply to the to one worksheets or all of the worksheets as the case may be. Um, so when you're combining visualizations from multiple worksheets into one dashboard, you may want it to be the case that the filter works for all of the visualizations generated separately so that it's not confusing. Or you can, you can if you want, you can have each, um, each filter apply separately to each of your visualizations in the dashboard. I think I wanted to show you the, the technology one. Um, so there's also an analytics bar, which will automatically calculate some statistics for you without having to do uh, much work. So the trend line is one that's useful. There's already one on there. And then for the fields themselves, you can actually, um, so Tableau calculates simple uh, calculations for you without having to do a lot of the hard encoding that you would have to in Excel or really just typing it. But you can, um, you can select you know, percentile if you want, and instead of average, it's an automatic change. Um, so there's some few simple, simple calculations that you can do just from a drop down menu that you um, would otherwise have to do in the in the shelf where you would actually type out the formula itself. So, so just to be clear, these are the these are the sheets here, and then the dashboards are here where you're combining visualizations. Okay, so now we know, you know, what what can a what can a dashboard look like. What is Tableau? Some what are some Tableau functions that we can use to make our visualizations? Now, I'd say um, there's a lot of options I showed you there to use. Um, probably when you're getting started, you might use 10 or 20 percent of them. You may not even need a calculated field. Maybe you just want to create a bar chart, a map. Maybe you just even want to use a sheet um, and then put that into a dashboard and use that to share your results. That's totally fine. A lot of times I'll use Tableau for descriptive analysis. Um, you know, before I get into a more in-depth, um, you know, statistical analysis. So it's it's good at the level of seeing your results immediately, um, so that you can you get an overall sense of what you what you've gotten from your survey. But then also you can come back to it later when you have more detailed information uh, when you want to do a deeper analysis. Excuse me. So one thing that I, um, I'm sure you've heard me talk about if you've if you've attended a, a workshop that I've hosted before is and that's data structure. And data structure is really what determines whether your your project is going to be successful, whether your visualization will come out the way that you want it to. Um, so it's something that I do focus a lot about because it's something that people get frustrated with and will just sort of they'll, they'll drop the project. Um, I've worked with some students who. Um, they want to. They would just want to go back to Excel or something they're familiar with, which is understandable. Um, but at this, um, you know, when you're working with something new, there's a few steps that you need to think about when you're creating visualizations in Tableau that will really get you running quickly into making visualizations, where otherwise you might spend a few hours sort of struggling or searching online about how to make this work. And so, specifically for for survey data. Um, you're sort of actually dealing with a two level hierarchy according to Excel, um, right? You have a bunch of questions, but questions themselves are actually a sub hierarchy within question, a qu question as a type of data. So you have question, you have a question, questions, and then you have the responses to those questions. So because of the two tier hierarchy, you actually need to represent the data in a different way. Um, whereas in a, in a spreadsheet, you're probably more used to thinking about data uh, in wide format. Um, where there's where the uh, the different variables are um, along the top and then the values corresponding to those variables are below whereas tableau actually prefers um, survey data in long format where so the x um, where so the x value in this would be actually be the the question number uh, and then the value would be the response to that question and so 
um, if you have a participant name or a participant ID for each person in the survey, they would actually be um, repeating multiple times um, in the in the Tableau data source, and that would actually be the correct format. Now it looks uh, if you're not used to dealing with that kind of data, it actually doesn't look right. You're thinking, why is that? Why is that name repeated? Um, that will that will cause problems on the other end. Um, and it's really in this way, actually, that the Tableau is more like some other programming languages, um, like R, for example. When you do visualization work in R, it also pref prefers long format. Um, and so. Even if it doesn't look intuitively right, it is important that you just that you that you go with it and, and uh, give Tableau long format um, so that you can create your visualization. And then we can actually deal with the problem of repetitive uh, participant participant IDs in a pretty easy way once we create our visualizations themselves. So I just want to check in if there's any okay, no questions as of now. Uh, feel free to hop in. Um, I think you saw in the the Tableau dashboard itself um, what Tableau the what the data source looks like in Tableau itself. Um, it does have an Excel like language. On the right is actually an example of a level of detail expressions when you're taking fields um, that you've already input into your data source and doing a calculation um, that isn't one of the more common ones that I showed you, like sum or average or distinct. Um, I showed you that there are data types that are similar to to other ones that you've seen in other in other venues, string numeric data, geographic being the one that's really useful. Um, and then calculated fields are those fields that are are created outside of your spreadsheet. I showed you, yeah, I showed you to add a connection um, through um, spreadsheets, you know, at the same time, uh, when you're adding a connection, you know, I find that when maybe I'm not looking at my spreadsheet in as much detail as I should be, I use Tableau to, to troubleshoot uh, errors in my data, whether there's missing values that I, I didn't see, um, or even I'll use a visualization, uh, a sheet visualization itself to um, try and find problems with my data. Maybe there are too many nulls, maybe there's a misspelling or there's actually um, an extraneous value in the response data. Uh, live versus extract. Extract is the one that takes the data from your data source and puts it in Excel um, so that once you hit that extract button, it won't update until you, you put it back to live. And then for, for importing into Tableau, there is sort of a choice that you can process the data before or after uh, creating the connection. So you can try to rely on Tableau to do all the work for you. Although for survey results, I recommend that you do some processing, some pre-processing in Excel, and then do the, the data pivot in Tableau itself. So for preparing uh, results for survey results for Tableau and Excel, you know, I have a, a screenshot here of the survey results from what we did um, in the last workshop together. And with this, um, it's actually not, sort of any any export you get from a, a survey platform is probably not going to be perfectly compatible with Tableau. So you need to do some pre-processing. Sometimes I do it in R if you want to, if you want to have some program experience, but you can also just do it in Excel. Um, I've also done that for large clients. Um, to format data in a way that would be useful to, for visualization. And so that includes things like paying attention to the question text, numbering the questions, um, knowing what sorts of response uh, types you're getting, whether it's multiple choice. So if you think about it, the way that we, uh, and I can show you the survey, activity survey that we did last time as an example. So it's easy to think about a bar chart for a multiple choice question, right? So question one, you would just have a, a bar for each one of the response choices. But but for a multi-select question, it's not, it's not as obvious. So the standard way to deal with this in survey research is actually to, 
to subset a question like question three into 3A to, let's see, uh, to 3F. Um, so that's something I actually did manually uh, in the, the Excel spreadsheet. Um, since there are people, since it's more of a, did you have this experience versus you didn't uh, type of question instead of a multi a multiple choice. So when you, uh, when you're representing that data, I think the more intuitive way to look at it is whether that person selected R or not, Tableau or not, um, and not uh, necessarily piling it into one question, because then you would get, uh, it would be hard to represent a person who chose, you know, Microsoft suite products and Tableau and R. You want to um, know, you want to know what each, what, what people think at the group level about each individual product, not necessarily whether one person likes these three or uh, those two. So the standard way is to divide those up. Same for uh, question four. And then, so for three F um, or for three E, this would be for writing questions. Um, I actually typically don't represent them in in Tableau, you, you can represent them indirectly if you want. I would suggest then coding that data into, um, into categories. So maybe for this question, what type of software um, MATLAB comes up a lot. So you would be able to, to code that or code any misspellings, something like that uh, into MATLAB in pre-processing um, and then fix that in the Excel spreadsheet and then push that to Tableau. So you're actually thinking about a few things, and this is why this is the complicated part uh, of the process and not the, the fun, easy visualization part, is you're thinking about survey structure, um, how to pivot the data so that it works for Tableau, and then thinking about how to divide up the questions uh, in a way that takes it from what is intuitive for a user um, to what's intuitive for someone, a researcher to look at. Um, so what you're really doing is bridging that gap, which is one of your most in, important jobs. So, yeah, so I mentioned, yeah, transforming survey results, uh, it's called pivoting. So in the example, I'll show you um, briefly, you'll be changing, well, I'll be changing everything from long to wide format. Um, and one thing to know about survey data and um, is that there are, in addition to data related to responses to the various questions, there's something we call administrative data. And administrative data is um, data that's that describes the individual, it's the individual himself or her herself, and not the answers to the questions. So um, it could be their their individual participant ID. Um, it could be the time that they took the survey. It could be the institution that um, that they come from or a department. Um, now you can get you can get administrative data from uh, individual questions, but the important thing is to separate out administrative information from your in your mind from from question data, since it's really only the question data itself that needs to be pivoted, um, so that you can represent your survey results by question separately. Sort of the other advantage with thinking about administrative data is that, um, and this is something I'll cover a little bit more in uh, the third. Um, workshop in the series. Um, and that's cleaning and, and processing the survey data itself. So for deduplication, um, you know, some in, in web survey platforms, a lot of times people will fill out the survey more than once. And in that case, you want to delete the survey that um, has been less completed compared to um, compared to the, the, the second the second attempt at the survey. And so for that, um, it's important to you know think. Uh, it's important to think about administrative data. So if you see the same participant ID, the same IP address, if you're using SurveyMonkey, you can use that to weed out um, extra, uh, extra responses, extra survey completes. And so, for creating you know a dashboard specifically from survey results, um, I have a screenshot here of the result um, to give you a sense of what uh, of a simple. You know, dashboard that you can create from a, a library services survey, um, the survey that I showed you the PDF of. So the steps I'll go through are processing the data in Excel, pivoting the data in Tableau, 
um, creating the visualizations in the sheets themselves and picking the data points and the marks that I want to use, uh, then merge the visualizations into a dashboard and finally saving it to a, a Twibix file. Actually, that's the so I just want to show you what when I started on Tableau, uh, what I tried to do. So I have the raw spreadsheet. I'm just going to just going to put it into Tableau and see what happens. So I have some data. Um, actually, this is not the, the raw one. Okay, so this is the raw file. Um, so Tableau automatically selects the first line in the spreadsheet as questions. And so that's just what it took from SurveyMonkey, which I don't find very helpful. And at the same time, it sort of mixes, um, depending on the, the question type, if it's a multiple choice question, um, it will do it right. It'll put the question uh, number and then the responses. Um, Sorry, if it's a multi-select, right? So this is the multi-select question from the PDF. Um, and then it'll just put, you know, whether the person selected uh, yes or no to that. Um, but it'll just assign it a letter and a number that just isn't very useful, whereas the question itself is over here. And so you already sort of, just by looking at it, you think, well, maybe I'm having, I'm having some data processing problems, but maybe I can do a visualization anyway. So let's give it a try. And so it's not going to do much. <laughs> You're not going to get much out of it. Um, and that's because the data is unpivoted. Tableau doesn't really know what, uh, what format you're giving it. So what it does is it just adds up everything together and gives you uh, yes or no represented, which is this tiny line here. And so if you're new to Tableau, this, this is, and this is what I did the first time I used it years ago, was just push my data in um, and then see what I could get out of it. Unfortunately, it doesn't get you very far. So what I'll do now is show you what to do in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and so this is a modified version of what I got out of SurveyMonkey from the survey that we took last time. So what I did um, is I took out a lot of the, I even I took out the survey text, the survey question text, and I replaced it with simple numbers. Um, and then for the multi-select questions, I divided them into subparts. So for the software question, I divided that up into 3A through 3F. Um, and then use just a numeric order. And there's another um, multi-select here for question six in the survey. And I left the demographic question um, by itself. I did add a, a location column for, for this visualization that I didn't collect, but it's there. And so one, one other question I get a lot is um, what to do with this with the survey question text. Um, I actually take it out of the, the Excel file since there actually isn't a way to uh, make a direct connection from the Excel files survey text, survey question text, and visualize that in a way that's useful. The best way to visualize the survey question text, I think, is to have is to hover over 
is so that when a user hovers over the question itself, QL1 doesn't mean a lot to them. So they hover over it and they see the question text. In order to have that happen, um, you have to make a calculated field. Um, you can't actually use the, the spreadsheet itself. So this actually makes things easier. It's a cleaner way to do it. So all you're doing is um, deleting some of the extra rows here that SurveyMonkey gives you, uh, manually entering in the question numbers, um, and then making sure they line up with the responses normally. Um, and you can delete some of this, this, um, this data if you want. I actually kept it in. It's part of the, part of the visualization. So even in large survey projects, I actually do do a certain amount of manipulation in Excel before importing. So we're going to use that. Um, I've used that to create uh, a results workbook. And so this is actually the pivoted version. I went ahead and uh, you can see it's actually pivoted. Let's see if I can unpivot it. OK, so this is what you would see if I had um, just made the connection. Um, you'll just see the questions come in. But again, what will happen is the same thing. You'll just get that funny visualization with that thin bar that's not very useful for you. So instead, what you do is you highlight all of the question numbers in the data source, and then we'll just repivot it. Um, and then because I already named it, it, it called it questions, but you can you can rename this if you want. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but we'll leave it as questions. And so now the data is in the format that you want so that you can create bar charts and maps and whatever you want. But notice I left the administrative data, the time and the time start and the participant ID here without pivoting it, and that is fine. Another thing I did um, was I created a calculated field. Uh, I didn't do it in the data source, so I'll show you that in the sheet. But I did create a, a calculated field here in the data source called survey duration. And so I was curious if there was um, an effect of participant by uh, the time it took to complete the survey. So what I did is I took the time end and uh, the time start. Um, and I uh, I actually did it backwards. And that way I have survey duration in my calculated field. Um, actually I think there's, I think there's a little bit of a source problem with the data, but the calculated field will tell you um, what the, the survey duration is for this. And then you can compare that against um, participant ID or the questions that they answered in the survey itself. So you can create a calculated field there in the original data source. Um, this is a simple bar chart that I created. Um, and so what I did here is put questions and responses both in the column side um, so that you have that on your, your y-axis. So there's a question on the y-axis and the responses are on the y-axis, which is a little bit different from what you, how you would think about it in Tableau. Um, and then I, what you're actually doing is filtering out the questions column that you, you pivoted into, right? We took the, the list of questions, pivoted it down. So now um, we can filter by question by doing, uh, by doing this. So show filter, it's already shown. You can pick something else, the demographic question. One thing I will say about filters that it's, I think it's for survey questions is that it's better to actually um, not allow people to multi-select. So I'll show you what happens when they multi-select if you allow that. And you get sort of a visualization that you don't have a lot of control over. And at the same time, I don't, uh, there's differences of opinion about this, but I think it's worth it to separate out the questions um, in, the, in the menu itself. Um, so you don't overload the, the visualization, especially when you're combining them into a dashboard with other visualizations, you sort of lose your control of your visual, visualization. So what I'll do is customize it and then I'll get rid of the all value. 
and then let's put it back to the way put it back to the way it was. Um, and then I alluded to earlier a problem with the way that when we pivot the data, remember what we're getting is uh, multiple data points for each individual in the in the long format. So the participant ID will be repeated all the way through the data source for each answer um, to each question. And so if you don't take that into account um, and you're uh, counting uh, participant IDs or you want to get um, responses per participant ID, um, not really in this one, but in the, let's see, in the map, you need to count, you need to count distinct. Otherwise, um, you will get uh, a, a large inflated um, number of participants, right? Because the, the, um, the location is administrative data. It's just one piece of data associated with each individual. Whereas um, if you are filtering by question, right, you're only going to have one participant ID. So there won't be that inflation of the number of responses by participant. And so that's one of the tricky things with Tableau with survey results is you have to be thinking about um, what's administrative data, what's question data. But the solution is quite simple. You just change um, the count of participant IDs. Um, and this is called the shelf where you can actually just enter in the, um, the formula. You change it from count to count distinct. I don't know if you can see that. Just count D and that way you're getting the distinct participant ID. So there won't be that uh, multiple um, in, your, in your visualization. Now, if I get rid of the D, you won't really see it in the visualization. You're just going to see the, the number. But I can, let's see. Let's get rid of it. So if you count it, it's going to come up with a funny number. Um, but if you do the count distinct, it should, it should change it correctly. Right. So you'll get the you'll get the color scheme that you want and the difference in the in the counts of the participant IDs, since you've eliminated the duplication uh, of multiples across. Uh, the wide, uh, sorry, the long format. And then this is where I wanted to plot survey duration against uh, a question number. So here um, I have the questions and the responses on the y-axis, but I want to compare it against um, the measure, which is average survey duration. So what I did is I went in here and I chose a, a measure that was easy to uh, to calculate without me having to go into shelf. So I now have the average survey duration. And then the, the question text should appear when I hover over. Um, when I hover over this and it does, but that didn't come through automatically. What I had to do was create a calculated field quite manually. It's an if then statement where if the question is one, so question one being one of the data points from the list of questions. And then I just entered in the question text itself, made it, a, pulled it here, made it a detail mark. And that way it will show up when you hover over um, the question itself. So those are the three separate sheets that I, I created for this. Um, I do want to show you location though. Let's remove it. So it, Tylo does a good job of recognizing location. The thing is you just have to actually make it do it. So
you have to select geographic role, select state province. And it will appear. So um, it will rec it will actually even collect uh, correct spelling errors if you've typed out the state wrong and prompt you to fix that. Um, and so this is the dashboard. So the sheet, if you want to create a new sheet, it's there. A new dashboard is here. Uh, a new dashboard is here. And so what I just did here was literally drag the sheets onto onto the dashboard. And for this, you actually don't want to do tile. You want to do floating, which just means that it's more it's more easily manipulated, um, and it's not. If you do tiled, it'll load up the entire dashboard. So you want to do floating. That way, I can actually change the size, and make it the way I want it to go. It's the same for the other two. These are both floating. Um, so that when you're when you send this to your colleague, they'll you can actually hide the sheets, and they'll just see um, the dashboard. So they won't even know how you created it. It'll just look like this great dashboard that you've made. Um, and then I actually made this filter, I believe, to apply to all of them. Yeah. So you notice that the the results in the survey duration charts changed, but the respondent locations didn't, and that's because um, you know, the question number doesn't determine where the respondent is from since it's administrative data. Um, so if you don't want that to be the case, you can go here, select which worksheets you want it to apply to, but I'd like to keep it for all of them. There's the storyboard, which I don't use too much, but it is um, here if you are, if you want to add more text really um, and not create a, a dashboard without too much explanation, all you can add titles and things to your dashboard, which is, is useful by itself. Okay, and then we have a few minutes, not too much time, um, not too much work to go through. But to share your, your Tableau dashboards, you save it as a Twibix. Um, your data is embedded, but there is the concern about data security. So remember that if you have created a Twibix workbook and you saved your data as um, that way, that it um, it's not encrypted when you send it. Um, so it is behind a wall. It's not out there for anyone to see. It's not an obvious way to pull it out. Um, just be aware that there is uh, that I don't send Tableau workbooks with uh, personally identifiable information with PII um, to 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 colleagues by email unless it's um, anonymized. It's something you can do. Um, so what you just need to do is have um, send your your colleague the Tableau workbook that you've created in uh, Tableau desktop and have them download Tableau viewer. I think I sent, I'll just send you that link. Okay. So that's the link to, to Tableau viewer. Um, you can use that to view the dashboard that I, I uh, the workbook that I created um, once that gets sent out. Um, and then if you're creating on your own um, to send to your colleagues. So we get to summarize um, what's important in Tableau. The most important step is, is data preparation, process, pre-processing the data uh, in 
Excel once you get your export from SurveyMonkey or for, from Qualtrics to assign question numbers, um, to get rid of question text, and to think about um, how to handle multi-select questions versus multiple choice questions. Pivoting your survey data um, from wide to long format for, for survey data and Tableau. Using calculated fields to add in question text or to make uh, extra fields in addition to what's, uh, what you have in your Excel file. Um, and then creating dashboards with multiple visualizations so that you don't have to uh, have your user toggle through um, each of your, your creations. And so it is possible to share dashboards with colleagues. And that uh, last point is to be aware of data security and that Tableau, uh, uh, Tableau workbooks aren't encrypted. Uh, don't send them by email unless you've anonymized the data or it's data that uh, doesn't have PII. So that, um, I'll leave time for questions um, since we have a few minutes left. Um, this is the first iteration of Tableau for visualizing survey results. So there's another session on Thursday, but coming up in May, the next workshop has to do with quantitative analysis. And so that's when we'll be getting more into the nitty gritty of um, statistical analysis, uh, seriously processing survey results, and then uh, looking at cross tabs. And so that's when you're looking at uh, concordance between questions, um, how, and then subgroups analysis, how different demographic uh, groups answer questions uh, or the reliability of the questions and then significance testing, particularly for year on year changes. So I think I did get a question. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, so for, yeah, just feel free to ask any questions you have about Tableau. Um, Hope this was helpful helpful for you to see sort of what Tableau can do and then exactly what to do when you have survey data and how to process that. Um, so yeah, just uh, jump in. Kevin, this is Sue. I have a question um, for you about about this, and it it looks like as I've listened to you that you know with with anything, practice makes perfect. Uh, do you have some advice if you're brand new to using Tableau? I mean, just what to do? Is it just play with some data and and see what works and what doesn't work? Do you have some best advice on? how not to be afraid of Tableau and, and just start working with it? Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for the question. I think that, um, I think the first step is creating the most simple visualization that you can um, not get bogged down in the, the data processing. So what I would do is just isolate the data from a single question um, to import that data into Tableau and then make a bar chart so that you see that you can do it. Um, you can uh, repeat what you've done uh, in Excel and then build from there. Um, and then I think one of the more, if, if you don't want to do a bar chart, I think one of the more rewarding ones is actually the geographic uh, visualizations, since you really only need individual IDs and then states or zip codes. And then you can um, simply drag that, uh, change it, drag that into a, um, into a sheet, select the geographic role and it will automatically create a map out of nowhere without without you really doing much work at all. So I think there I think the idea is to get an easy payoff before getting bogged down in, in data processing. Great, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for Kevin? And if you do, if you do have um, a dashboard that you like help with, or a data processing um, workflow that you want help putting together, feel free to reach out. I can I can help you one on one if you'd like. Kevin, we may have some colleagues on 
on this session who haven't didn't attend your your first one so we can be sure when we send out the slides and the recording to share your, your email address so that uh, colleagues can reach you but i would second that please reach out to kevin if you would like some assistance or just have any questions um, he, and i know he'll be happy to to provide assistance absolutely Well, Kevin, I, since I'm, I'm not seeing um, any further questions, maybe we can give our colleagues a few minutes of back in their day. Um, but thank you very much for, for this workshop. Uh, I would encourage the colleagues on the call, if you have colleagues that you think might um, enjoy the, this workshop, um, please have them register or reach out to me and I'll make sure they get the registration information for Thursday's session, which will start at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, with that, Kevin, let me thank you again for doing this workshop. I every time I look learn about Tableau, I learn something new every time. So thank you for uh, conducting this workshop, and thanks to everyone for for being here this afternoon. Um, we will uh, bring it to a close then. Yes, thanks everyone for your attention.